Hello everyone, my name is Brennan Marr. That noise you're hearing is my ventilator. And welcome to what I call Twilight Tuesday. On page turners, they were not my Star Wars podcast. Tuesdays are when we talk about hot or controversial topics in Star Wars. Today I'd like to tackle a rather hot topic related to the prequels. Or should I say the Star Wars prequel trilogy. Now this entire week is going to be dedicated to the Star Wars prequel trilogy. And Star Wars prequels which include Rogue One and Solo. This is prequel week and this is not an April Fool's Day joke. I count myself as a prequelist. A prequelist is someone who admits that the prequels have major problems but is willing to discuss and be happy with the things that were presented that they enjoy. So it's more of a focus on what's good about them instead of what's bad. And today we're going to take on a big one. Politics. Ah. Well, let's begin. In the very opening crawl of Star Wars Episode One: The Phantom Menace, we get the line, the taxation of outlying trade routes is in dispute. Oh my. Now, I absolutely think that that is rather nonsensical. Or nonsensical in the sense that that doesn't really fit in Star Wars. Taxation of trade routes. Trade franchise, shipping, things like that. So that immediately off the bat turned a lot of people off with, oh no. This is going to basically be Star Wars C-SPAN. And admittedly, there is a bit of that. Now, I think that the whole thing about taxation of trade routes is rather ridiculous. But I absolutely am unafraid to admit that I very much enjoyed some of the political talk between Palpatine and Queen Abedala. Apart from maybe the bad delivery of Queen Amidala's lines, but whatever. But the idea of deposing Chancellor Valorum, so of course Palpatine could take the seat of galactic leadership, which would eventually, of course, lead to him taking over the galaxy as the Emperor. The motion of no confidence, the scene in the great Senate chamber, I found interesting. Now a lot of fans did not. And then in Star Wars Episode 2 Attack of the Clones, there was something about voting on a war act and things like that, which I found interesting, but I know a lot of fans did not. Revenge of the Sith probably nailed the political angle probably better than the other two. With the idea of liberty dying to thunderous applause, as Queen Amidala says, or, or Senator Amidala. And the whole idea of the Jedi Council wanting Anakin to spy on the Chancellor, which shakes his faith in them, and things like that are very interesting. 
I think, and actually handled fairly well, considering that the prequel trilogy didn't handle it very well. Now, let us jump over to the original Star Wars trilogy and talk about how that handled politics. Because for anyone out there saying, keep politics out of Star Wars, let's go back to the original film, A New Hope. Some of the early scenes suggest that, or say that basically the Emperor, or rather Darth Vader, and other Imperial leaders need to kind of maneuver around the Senate. The Imperial Senate is still intact when A New Hope begins. And they are really the only thing standing between Palpatine and absolute power, though. Admittedly, the Senate is not really that powerful. They're really there for show. And we learned that the Death Star was more or less kept secret from the Senate. In fact, uh, they were going to reveal that in Rogue One, you may recall, reveal it to the Senate so that they could oust Emperor Palpatine. Now, in A New Hope, we learn that they have to maneuver it. The Darth Vader orders his men to basically make, make up a lie about the capture of Princess Leia and the capture of her spaceship. You know, basically saying that, oh, it was destroyed and all aboard were killed as kind of a way to maneuver around so that the Senate doesn't get wind of what they're up to. The fact that Leia has the Death Star plans and Vader's trying to get them back. So that the Senate and the galaxy at large doesn't learn of the plan. Until it's too late, rather. And then we get that whole bit with the Council Chamber with the argument between Modi and Tag for Taj, when Tarkin comes in and says, yeah, the Imperial Senate will no longer be of any concern to us. I've just received word that the Emperor has dissolved the Council permanently. To which Taj says, that's impossible. How will the Emperor maintain control without the bureaucracy? which Tarkin responds, regional governors were not, will now be given direct control over their territory. Fear will keep the local systems in line with fear of this battle station. So basically the plan, as it unravels through other canon sources, is that the Death Star is kept a secret until the moment when the Emperor dissolves the Senate so they're no longer a block to his power. And then of course they can immediately start attacking things and blowing up Alderaan and the citizens of the galaxy. It will be too late for them to object. Or for them to object through the Senate by you know, complaining to the local senators. And that I think is very interesting that that is all done as a keeping it secret until it's too late to do anything about it. And so we see that there has always been people discussing politics in Star Wars. I'm talking discussing it in universe. I'm not talking about the the real world parallels. So for anybody who was a bit concerned about the talk, the the political talk in the prequels, it's always been part of Star Wars. However, I don't think it was handled particularly well in the prequel trilogy. I enjoyed it, but I know a lot of fans did not. 
And some of the ideas are interesting, but I think it could have been handled so much better. Now, now we jump to the sequel trilogy. Hmm. Here's where things get a bit murky. We know that there is a republic, and we know that there is a resistance. And we know that they are connected somehow. However, The Force Awakens does not do a good job of telling us how they're connected. There are comics and books that further explain it, and TV shows, like Star Wars Resistance, but it is not explained in the film. And as I pointed out two weeks ago in my podcast, if it's not in the film, then it doesn't really count, because then the average viewer doesn't have any idea what's going on. Now, we learn in the books that the Republic, the New Republic, which is created after the fall of the Empire, did not listen when Maya was trying to warn them about this mysterious First Order. So Leia went off and created a paramilitary group called the Resistance. The Republic didn't learn that they were totally wrong and that Leia had been right. Until the Republic capital was destroyed on Hospian Prime. By the Starkiller base. Now, some of this information is not made explicit in the film. I have a theory. Because many Star Wars fans did not like the discussion of politics in the prequel trilogy, that J.J. Abrams, Lawrence Kasdan, and others who were involved with the making of The Force Awakens may have said to themselves, well, the fans don't want to hear this stuff. So we will bore them with the details. When the truth of the matter, as I pointed out, that in the original trilogy, we see it handled correctly. So I think they should have, in the first of it, explained further the, the political situation in the galaxy. And they did not do a very good job of that. And I think it may have been motivated by fear of offending the fans by hearkening too much back to the prequels. But I think they may have missed the boat on the fact that even the original trilogy talked politics. So it can be done well. And as much as I love The Force Awakens of the Last Jedi, I do not like that the political situation was not well explained. So I think politics is fine in Star Wars as long as it's handled well. Yes, the discussion of trade routes and taxation, that's a little outside of what Star Wars should be about. But Star Wars has always been political, just ask George Lucas. That's always been his intention. So, those are my thoughts on the use of politics in Star Wars. Let me know what you think. You can follow me on YouTube at Tasty Waffle. Tasty Waffle is my channel name. You can find me on Twitter at Brennan Blue, B-R-E-N-N-E-N-B-L-U-E. And follow me on Facebook at Brennan Marr. And of course, please subscribe to my podcast if you like what I've had to say. So yet again, my name is Brennan Marr. That noise you're hearing is my ventilator, and thank you for tuning in. To Twilight Tuesday on Page Turners They Were Not, my Star Wars podcast. May the forest be with you.